Kyle, is that your wedding suit you're wearing next week? Are you going <laughs> to? <laughs> My friends, good morning and welcome in this very rainy day. You know, as we were praying beforehand, um, I just felt, you know, if, if the rain was falling outside, that the Lord will soak us in here with his spirit. You know, we wear outside our umbrellas. We, we have umbrellas and we have uh, wear raincoats to avoid getting wet. But I prayed this morning that you just take your raincoats off, take your umbrellas down, and let Holy Spirit just come and dwell and move and change and restore and heal our lives this morning. Do you want to do that? Do you want Holy Spirit to heal us today? That's what he does. That's his job. He comes to heal. He comes to unite. He comes to change. He comes to come and live within you so that you can know the glory of God and through that reflect in your lives upon this earth his glory in all that you do, in your words, in your actions. And he's going to do that today if you let him. So take those raincoats off, take those hats off, take those umbrellas down and let him move freely in your lives because today is a day where he will set you free if you let him. Amen. And so, Father God, I, I pray this morning as I bring you a word that you will take the words I've prepared, Father God, and, or you've prepared in my heart and let him speak to your people. We pray for those who are, are watching online, Lord, that they'll be aware of your holy presence, your beauty surrounding them, your Holy Spirit moving and transforming. And Lord, I pray that as we finish this morning, whatever time that may be, that our hearts will be changed. And we'll walk from this building, Lord, with a new understanding of who we are in you because we have a new understanding of who you are. And so may we glorify your name. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. What a wonderful reading to continue. You know, John spoke last week about two Chronicles 2, uh, 7, 14. And he looked at the, the, one of the first verses, if my people, that is the people um, in the old days, the people of Israel, but it is adaptable to us to say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And God, John spoke about those. And if you want to watch those, go into the, um, on YouTube or, or whatever system there is and, and try and catch up what's going on because today I'm going to focus on something special and that is seeking the face, seeking the face of God. And then once you've sought his face and you've found his face, then you can turn from your wicked ways. Whew, that's quite a powerful sermon, isn't it? Turn from your wicked ways. I don't say that. The Bible says that. Okay? I'm not saying you're wicked. I'm not saying God's people are wicked. But at that, in that situation there, there were a lot of wicked people around. Let me just read you that reading. 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. You see, that healing of the land is conditional if God's people respond to his ways and turn from their wicked ways, then he will heal the land. His eyes will be open, which means that he'll be looking and protecting you and guiding you and restoring you. Conditional. If you will do this, I will do that according to this uh, part of Chronicles. Seek my face, says the Lord. And turn from your wicked ways. And I hope to enlighten you this morning. What does it mean to seek God's face? What does it mean to, to look and 
try and seek his face. Well, I believe it's looking and seeking for that deep and personal relationship with God. Seeking, looking, searching. Our quest is to seek the Lord. To find him and find that deep relationship he wants with you as a father to a child, as a father to a daughter, as a father to a son. Can you imagine that the God who created this world, who redeemed this world, wants a personal relationship with you and I, with his people, his church, with all of his creation? Seek the Lord, seek his face. Seeking his face could also mean seeking his presence. You know, we invited Holy Spirit to come this morning. And if we invite him, he comes. He will not come. He will not push his way in unless he's invited. Seek the Lord's presence by his spirit. Seek his righteousness. He's called people to be righteous. His anointed people to be a righteous people upon this earth, proclaiming his name, living in the way that he wants us to live. He instructed us, seeking his ways, his righteousness, and seeking his kingdom, seeking the values of his kingdom upon this earth, seeking the values of his kingdom in our lives, in our daily lives, in all that we do. When we walk, when we talk, when we speak, When we live, when we think, think from a kingdom perspective. When you seek the Lord, he will guide you in those ways. He will guide you in righteousness. He will guide you to the ways of his kingdom. Can you imagine that? If you and I, God's church, you know, part of God's church here in Pontyclean. I used to call it Pontyclean before, but it's Pontyclean, I've been told very clearly. Here in Pontic, if we could demonstrate God's kingdom living in us, what a difference it would be in this world. What a difference we would make to this area. What a difference we would make to our families if we live from the kingdom values that God has given to us. Seek his kingdom, seek his presence, seek his righteousness, seek his face. But how do you do that? How do we build that relationship with the Lord? How do we build that relationship that the Lord desires of his people? Those who've been separated from the world and called to worship him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at that wonderful Psalm of David. Psalm 23. King David himself, a man set aside, a shepherd boy, anointed by Jesus, sorry, anointed by God to be king of Israel, to guide the people of Israel. And he developed a tremendous relationship with the Lord. The Psalm 23, like many other Psalms, tell us about that relationship that man has with God and God has with man. Let me read you those words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the midst of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a confidence David had. What a trust he had in God. Even at the beginning of that psalm, it says, I shall not be in want. He knew that God would provide for him, whatever happens. What a trust, what a confidence, what a faith he had. He knew that God would restore his soul. He had a trust for that restoration, that soul that he carries in him. The Lord would restore that. He guides in paths of righteousness. 
When facing death, he knew very clearly that his Lord was with him. I shall fear no evil, David said, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff to comfort me. Then in the midst of all that, he said, you spread a table before me in the midst of my enemies. And what happens? He rejoices. My cup overflows. What a confidence, what a faith. What a life he lived in that trust in his creator. And he never even knew Jesus at that stage. So how much more informed are we since Jesus came, the perfect representation of the Father? How much more do we know of the Father's heart when we meet with Jesus? And finally, David said in the psalm, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He had the confidence, whatever happened to him during his reign upon this earth, that his future was sealed with his heavenly Father forever and ever. Can you imagine going through life with that, with that knowledge, with that faith, with that confidence, with that trust? that whatever happens to you, your future is sealed with God forever. And there is a promise from Jesus. A promise to each one of us who trust and believe. A promise to all those who are born again into his kingdom. What a confidence David had. What an example he is to us. How did David get that confidence? How did he build that trust up? Let's look a bit further back into that psalm, Psalm 23. Verses 2 especially. In, what does it say there? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. God led David into a quiet place. The quietness so that he could absorb the presence of the Lord. In the stillness with nothing else around him, the quiet waters indicate stillness. He built his trust up. He built his relationship up with our Lord in the quietness of life. You may find your pastures somewhere, somewhere quiet. That room alone where you can go by yourself and seek the Lord's presence, seek his face. That place in the car you may find. That place when you're walking, you may find our Lord. But just we are called to seek him in that place of quietness, that place of stillness. For many of us, we live very, very busy lives. And that is difficult for us sometimes. But my friends, if we need to form that relationship with Jesus Christ, with our Heavenly Father, then we have to find time. Relationships come out of time, spending time with that other person. But David's encouraging us here to spend the time with God. Do you want that relationship? It's a big question, isn't it? Are you and I prepared to spend that time seeking his face. My friends, it will make a difference, a tremendous difference in our lives if we do that. We need to go next to that waterside in the green pastures so we can be nourished and refreshed. David, the shepherd boy, when he took his sheep there, he knew the the green pastures were a place of feeding a place of nourishment, a place where the the, the sheep could feed and get a nourishment for them to continue to live. He knew the waters were there so the sheep could feed and to quench that thirst. But are you thirsty? Are you hungry for more of the Lord? They're all big questions, aren't they? Maybe you're saying, I'm sort of maybe a bit, but not too much. My friends, unless you have a hunger and a passion for that relationship with Jesus, then you'll never have that deep relationship with him that he desires of you. 
and our actions will be that of the world because we're in space in our lives the enemy will get in and he'll use that for the destruction not only of yourselves and myself but for the church and for the world seek the Lord seek his heart seek his face we cannot build relationships with God without spending time with him that's a must we cannot hear his voice unless we have the stillness and the antenna raised to receive to hear his voice it tells us in John 10 27 my sheep hear my voice not my sheep have heard my voice or are going to hear my voice my sheep hear my voice is a present tense do you want to hear the voice of the Lord? It may be a vocal voice, it may be an audible voice, it may be a voice through the scriptures, it may be the voice given by somebody else. It may be an impression in the mind, in the heart, a picture, or something like that. In the stillness, you can hear the voice of the Lord. And we never get to understand the wonderful holiness of God unless you spend time with him. My friends, put time aside in your busy lives. Should I tell you sometimes um, time with the Lord, spending with him is more important than eating sometimes. The nourishment that comes through Holy Spirit will far outseed sometimes that of food. Spend time maybe do you ever do prayer soaking here? Have you ever done prayer soaking? Yeah, where you just sort of, you know, I can remember leading a prayer soaking group back in, when was back in Shrewsbury, where we used to just uh, gather in a room and play some music and just wait for the Lord to speak, to transform, to enter into the heart, to enter into the mind in the stillness of that time. And when you, you come out of that time, you are so renewed. Use music. Music is a beautiful, beautiful connection with our Lord. Use anything you can to try and form that relationship with our Lord. But one thing I, I encourage you not to do, so often when we go into prayer, we petition God, Lord, please do this for this person, that for that person, please change. No, my friend, soak just in the presence of God. Let him pour into you all that he wants to pour into you. Don't petition. Try praying sometimes without asking for things. Just being in his presence. Try it and see how it works. You see, when we develop that relationship with our Lord, that personal, deep relationship with God, the next part of of that Chronicles reading will be automatic. It will be natural response to that deep relationship with God and we will turn from our wicked ways. Let me share with you a testimony of Anne. One night I received a phone call going back a few years ago and um, somebody said, yeah, a friend of mine said, yeah, I have a, we're going to Toronto next week and um, somebody's dropped out, do you want to come? I was a curate at that time, and just beginning of, my, of God's calling upon my life to serve him. And I, I chatted with Sydney, and we, he said, yes, I want to go. I had no idea why I'd be going there, but I went there in anticipation. I heard so much of what's going on there, the good and the bad, but I felt something was happening there of God's kingdom, God's anointing, something supernatural that was almost tangible. I could feel going on in that place. And so I went. And uh, it was a five-day conference. And it was very interesting. When I got there, they started to play worship. And the first three days of that conference, I was on the ground crying and weeping. Can you imagine spending three days paying nearly a thousand pounds for an airfare and spend three days crying and weeping? Strange, isn't it? But the Lord, Lord's presence was so tangible that he came into my life and he was getting rid of all that rubbish because when you call into leadership, my friends, of a church, 
You have to be free of a lot of rubbish, okay? Because the enemy will try to destroy you. But I had to be prepared. And those three days, although at that time I felt really bad, were the most three wonderful days in my life when God purged me of all my wickedness, all my sin. He showed me a, a picture of a towel and he's wringing that towel out. You know, that, wringing all that rubbish out. All those years of, of sin and everything else. Wringing it out. And I was actually an ordained minister at that time. Can you imagine it? He's wringing all that stuff out. And then the last two days, I was able to get up and worship our Lord in a different way than ever, I've ever worshipped before. And he showed me not a picture. He showed me a picture of a spring that is winding up to send. It's interesting. That was just a personal thing for me. But I thought I'd share with you how in the Lord's presence he purges and he restores and he sends. That's for each one of us. Isn't that amazing? And those... You know, I, I spent £10,000, all my money, to have those days. What he did for me in those few days changed my life. And maybe it took three days because I'm pretty stubborn. <laughs> and maybe for yourselves, it may just take a second. It's like that. Who knows? We're all different, aren't we? He works in each one of us in different ways. We've all got different backgrounds and different things to, to bring to him. But that was an amazing time. The overwhelming presence of our Lord. I sought his face and I found his face. And he changed my life. I know many of you have got testimonies which are even greater than that. But I know what he did for me. I was a reluctant person, but I opened up and he changed. And you know, I see now a God of righteousness, a God of beauty, a God who loves and a God who restores, but also a God that empowers. You see, that's why he says in that Chronicles reading, seek my face. The Lord Jesus says that very clearly as well, doesn't he? Seek and you shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened. Seek, my Lord. Seek his ways. Seek his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. That Toronto experience set me free. Did I ever sin again? Yes. But I've got a Lord who loves and forgives. A God who comes in and takes over and drives and takes away that rubbish and fills me with his spirit. That's what, that is what God expects of this church. He expects us to be these people who are filled with his spirit, walking, spirit-filled people, transforming and changing the world. Can you just, can you just imagine for one moment that really happening? Can you dream like that? Do you like dreaming? I love to dream. I love to dream of God's kingdom coming into the present. I love to dream to see people's lives change. I pray for my family continually that they will come to know my Lord Jesus Christ. How little do they realize how he would change their lives. But we cannot, my friends, walk upon this earth carrying all the rubbish in our lives. You see, if we carry rubbish, if we have a sack of, of, of pain and fear and addictions, we cannot express God's love and freedom when we carry these things in our backs. It weighs us down. Are you weighed down with, with things in your life? Are you weighed down with fear? Are you weighed down with inadequacy? Are you um, weighed down with all these things that make you so, feel so inferior to do the work that God's called you to? What are your fears? Death? 
unemployment, sickness, financial problems, you know, family problems, church family problems, as you know. Are some of us a bit arrogant in our ways? Are we prideful? Are we very independent? Are we angry people? Do we have a purpose? If you're carrying fears, my friends, the Lord says this, seek my face and I will take your fears away. David knew that all his fears were taken away because he had trust in our God. He had trust in his creator. He knew when he went through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, he said. Would you like to be in that position, going through the shadow of death, saying, Lord, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Can you imagine being those sort of people? But God calls you to be those people, fearless people, because you've been set free. And that freedom is a gift given to you and I and God's church. Maybe today is that day when you can say, yes, Lord, I want to be free. I want to have that trust that David had in his God. I want to walk through, the shadow of, walk through that shadow of death and I, I have fear no evil. I want to walk that path of righteousness I want to say those words, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. My friends, we can do that if we seek the Lord's face. And when you seek his face, then you will automatically turn away from that wickedness that is so natural in some of our lives. Seek and you shall find Knock and the door shall be opened. And maybe today, today is Sunday the 17th of September, we can say, Lord, you've set me free. Lord, I'm ready to go out there and be your servant, to do your work and to grow your kingdom. And so, my friends, that's it. That's the end of my sermon. When I first started, I said, Lord, will you take away that umbrella that shields us? Will you take away our raincoats and let that water metaphorically soak into us? Let your spirit soak into us. I can only ask you the question, do you want to be free? A lot of you saying, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Why live a life with chains on your hands when you can be free and serve the Lord? For he will equip you with all that you need in this life to do the work he's called you to do. Can I say a prayer with you? Let me just invite Holy Spirit of God to come. Father God, you are a giver of all good things. You sent Jesus to set us free. But Lord, we do carry some baggage with us that weigh us down. Our fears, our addictions, our negative thoughts, our anger. our distrust in you. Lord, will you come by your Holy Spirit? Will you come and do a mighty healing in our hearts? Will you help us day by day to seek your face, seek your presence, seek your righteousness, seek your kingdom? 
Will you help our stubborn hearts, our rebellious hearts, Lord, to submit to you so that we can truly find that relationship with you? So come, Holy Spirit of God. Come in your righteousness. Come speak to our hearts. And come and draw us now into your holy presence. So come, Holy Spirit.